how to be a YouTuber in 2018. I'm Sam Sheffer. I am a technology focused YouTuber that's been doing YouTube for like two and a half, three years. My name is Eric Conover and I have been doing YouTube for about three years full time. I make travel films and I live here in New York. And in this video, we are going to be discussing the gear that Eric and I use to make these YouTube videos. Anecdotally, the gear doesn't really matter. It's the kind of edit and the storytelling that goes into it that makes a good video. But Eric and I use kind of different gear to make our videos. Our workflows are a little bit differently. And this video, we're going to be discussing what all of that looks like. And I divided this into like five or six categories and we're gonna just talk about gear and not necessarily drive down into like the specs and whatnot, but more of just like why, for example, I choose Canon and Eric chooses Sony. Category number one, cameras. I bought my first DSLR, a Canon T2i. I think it was 2009 when I was working at Engadget and then I sold that and bought a Canon 5D Mark II in like 2011. Then I got a 70D when I started really uploading to YouTube and the camera that we're shooting this video on is the Canon 80D. Canon, 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 Canon. Why? Two very specific and simple reasons. I really like the colors that these cameras produce. You can customize the color profile obviously, but there's just something about the way Canon looks that I like personally and the operating system. I've been on Canon cameras for about a decade. I really like the way the OS works. It works for me. So uh, when I first started YouTube, I actually used an iPhone. For the first like two months I used an iPhone and then I graduated to this guy right here. This is a Canon G7X Mark II. Uh, I like this guy just because especially for traveling, you know, when you're in the moment, you can flip this out, turn it on, capture something. The quality is fairly decent. And like Sam was saying, I actually do dig the color more on Canon, but for my kind of more higher gloss shots, I have a Sony A7R Mark II, and normally I'll have like a, a G Master F2.8 16 to 35 lens on it. It's interesting because the color is a big difference. It's like the colors that are on Canon. I yeah. will admit that. This is a great camera. I've just uh, I kind of just graduated to Sony. Not really a particular reason. This camera. It's also great for Instagrams. You know, you have to have the because it's a camera. <laughs> but no, this is for the more high gloss shots, you know, when we get to the, the stabilizers and all that, I use this big boy camera. But then for most of my shots when I travel, especially going through the airport, you know, if I'm out actually like out there, out there. I mean, it's easier to kind of just like whip that out. You don't have to like attach a lens or whatever. Yeah. And it's so, I mean, it's so incognito when you film it's like, like a that. Little tic -tac. That's right. Also, I've noticed that when you have a smaller camera and you're traveling, people are less intimidated by this than this. Yeah. like. Oh, well, I'll show you the setup in a second, but like with my Canon 80D and a microphone on the crane, it just, it looks so threatening and people yeah. are so turned off by it versus like that. It's just like, oh, he's just a tourist. Exactly. Category number two, lenses. So for me, because I'm a Canon guy, I have Canon lenses. When I first started doing YouTube videos, I went for the cheapo lenses, cheapo as in pricing and like quality, it's cheap glass. This is the 10 to 18. This is super, super, super wide. And then this is the 18 to 55 cheap lenses. And then I made some friends at BH, thank you team, and they hooked me up with very good glass. This is the 24 to 105, and then I'm shooting on the 1635. That's an f2.8 lens. These lenses are very good. And then I shoot, like I was saying, with Sony, so I have the G Master series. I what made is these, that? The this, telescope? You feel heavy? This is doing a trouble with it. Wow, it's very, does this, is this one of those things that you have to put the tripod yeah. on the lens? Because it's oh so heavy. Oh my. So this is the Sony G Master F2.8, 70 to 200. This is what we call the Ben Affleck lens. What does because that mean? Because when you shoot with this, you look like a movie star. Wait, you're you're saying you look like a movie star anyone, or the subject? Anyone in the shot. Okay. okay. Because this is, I travel a lot and I have a lot of uh, kind of scenic vista shots. And if you use this guy, it just makes the foreground really seem like it's right up and close and personal. It kind of brings the foreground in. Do you shoot yeah. mostly at 70 or 200 or just kind of variable? Uh, it depends. The 200, like 200 with F. 2.8 it is, is crazy. It's filth. So I use this for the more cinematic stuff. And then like I was saying earlier, I have the F2.8 16 to 35. This is what I vlog with just because it's nice and wide. 
You don't have to ever worry, you know, if you're in shot or not. And then I have a, I have another G Master f2.8, 24 to 70. And that, it's kind of the in-between lens. I actually use the 16 to 35 more recently just because it's wider and you can see more of, you know, where you're at in the world. It's good for landscapes and showing everything rather than the 24 to 70. It's a bit more close up on the subject. Category number three, stabilizers. Gimbals, three axis machines that make your shots Super freaking steady. Eric, what the hell is that? I know exactly what that is, but tell the viewers. So this is the Ronin, I believe it's the Ronin, you probably know better than I do. It's just a regular Ronin. Ronin S. A Ronin M, yeah, Ronin DJI M. Ronin M. So this guy, I got, uh, I got this in October of last year. I was filming a car commercial and I needed something to keep the camera from shaking. So and uh, I, I do recall being one you of were, the shooters on I'm that. Really, <laughs> yeah. Sam, actually, you were the Ronin operator, weren't you? That thing is such a pain in the ass to use. Well, but the thing is, it's so, the shots are so good, yeah. but it is, I mean, look at this. I can't. It, 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 you're, it works out your shoulders unnecessary amounts. This is how you get what kind of shots? Just like super beautiful, yeah, gliding so shots, I guess, right? I mainly use this for more commercial work. Like I filmed an apartment tour the other day with this, uh, commercials, like car commercials. Mm -hmm. For travel, like I can rarely bring this when I travel just because, I mean, look at this thing. It, does it break down? Yeah, it breaks down pretty easily. Okay. So the gimbal that I use is called the Ziyun Crane. It is a single-handed gimbal, way smaller than this. Although Eric uses way, I mean, I use big lenses too, but you can't put humongous lenses on the crane. That's one of the downsides to it. Um, there is an updated version that can hold more weight, but I use this on my electric skateboard reviews. Um, you can also kind of film yourself with it so you can tilt down a little bit and kind of, uh, you know, shoot like this if you want to. And I've got my 10 to 18 on here, so it's super wide. I really like this thing. It's like 700 bucks. Like I said, there's a new version of it, and also DJI makes one now, a single uh, kind of like one-handed, but it's actually pretty big. If you're looking to get ultra, and I mean like ultra cinematic stable shots, you have to get a gimbal. Like, you need it. no matter how good you think you are at holding a camera steady, once you put it on here and you film stuff with this, game changing. Category number four, drones. Eric, how many drones have you crashed, lost, I mean, what number, literally what number drone is this for you? This is actually the seventh. Since I've been flying drones, this is the seventh drone I've owned. Uh, which drone is this? This is the Phantom 4 Pro. Why Phantom, why DJI? So there's a few reasons. A lot of people use the Mavic Air mm -hmm. or the Mavic, mm -hmm. and it's a great drone, but it's just, in, in high wind, it's the worst. The camera becomes jello, this is a bit sturdier. It's not quite as big as something like an Inspire. The camera quality is great on this. It's 4K at 60. And it's for me, it's worth carrying this around. I was just going to say, you travel with this thing? Yeah, this is my go-to travel drone. Even though like the legs don't break down, this is like, I mean, minus the props, but this is how big this drone is. I mean, is. It, it is it's super cumbersome and bulky, yeah. but I'd rather have this shots. than, yeah, I'd rather have better shots and sacrifice the portability than, you know, have something so this is a fully autonomous drone by a company called Skydio. I had a Mavic Pro uh, that I was flying in Norway near a cruise ship, and uh, that's a whole nother story, but rest in peace, Mavic Pro. And then Skydio gave me this, I made the video about it, and this is a different kind of drone than this one. This one, you can kind of like fly off and send away really far. This is mostly to capture like you're, you're running, you're skateboarding, you're playing a sport. Not necessarily meant, like I said, to fly away and, and get those beautiful, you know, top-down landscape shots. This is like, hey, you wanna go riding uh, and, and have this thing follow you without having to worry at all. This drone is gonna serve that purpose for you. Category number five, workstation, and more specifically, editing software. I am a proud user of Premiere Pro. The first time I ever used Premiere Pro was when I first joined Mashable. At the end of 2015, I had done edits in Final Cut 10, and then uh, my friend Sam on a Friday afternoon at the end of the workday, I was just like, hey man, I really wanna learn Premiere. And he taught me basically everything I needed to know to do the basics in like 30 to 45 minutes. So if you're looking to make the jump, 
from Final Cut to Premiere know that you can do it. But Eric, what do you use to edit? I actually still use iMovie. When I first started YouTube, mm -hmm. I saved the money, I got this. This is, this is your first YouTube laptop? 2014. Wow. End of 2014, yeah. I saved up, I was working at a hotel, got this, and iMovie was literally the software on here. It's also free. It's free, mm -hmm. and I kind of just stuck to it. And I, like, I know how to use Premiere, mm -hmm. I know how to use Final Cut, mm -hmm. but it's just easier. Yeah. I, I mean, but it, I'm at the point now where there You're are- fast also. There's so many limitations now, because that I want to be doing more more things in the edit mm -hmm. that I can't do. But I think the takeaway of this segment is if you're looking to start a YouTube channel and make videos, just like use the tools that are there and readily available and free. Like someone like Eric, who is an established pro YouTuber, uses free software to make his videos. So you don't have to like jump all of the sharks and pay a boatload of money for gear and editing software and lenses mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Well, even now when, compared to when I started to now, I mean now phones shoot in 4K. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone has a 4K camera in their pocket. I mean, it's it's honestly true. Like I am by I hate the gear. Mm -hmm. I don't hate the gear, but it doesn't matter to you. No, you don't, not you at don't all. stress over it. Either. No, no. Right. So I use a 15-inch MacBook Pro just to specify, and then Eric uses the use a 13-inch, right? Yeah, but I also have a I believe it's a 32-inch monitor that I edit on. So that's that's I think another difference yeah. between us is I like to edit, you know, like literally laptop on the lap, just like mm -hmm. grinding out like this with the edits in the trackpad. Do you use a mouse and keyboard also? Um, or do you use this? I use this. Okay, but you're you're just looking at a much bigger screen. Yeah, and that's a recent thing. So for the first two years of YouTube, I used this. Mm -hmm. I would travel with this. All my edits were done on this. Mm -hmm. Now I just have a monitor to actually, you know, it's better visually. Uh, and then as far as organizing, because when I first started YouTube, I just did daily vlogs and mm -hmm. I didn't really have a theme for what I was making. Mm -hmm. Now it's specifically travel and then videos based around New York. So I use Google Drive and Google Sheets a lot to kind of organize my videos out and plan them. And then physical like workspaces. I work in my studio here downtown. I rarely edit in my apartment because I, you know, can think in here because it's not super tiny. There's there's plenty of air to breathe in this space. Eric, where do you mo uh, make most of your videos? Complete opposite. Everything I do, I do from home. So I have a little workspace, a desk set up in my apartment. Mm -hmm. All my work is done from the apartment, and then I also have a co-working space with those two over there. There's people in this room that you can't see right now. Sam's brother. And speaking of physical workspaces, if you are an aspiring YouTuber or someone that is looking to move to New York, Eric actually just made a video about what it's like to live and work in New York. I'm in the video. We kind of went around my space here and the places that my space and the places that Eric works in. That'll be linked below. Check it out on Eric's channel. So Eric, you have such like big gear, it kind of just like plays into your, I'm just like, all I'm talking about is how tall Eric is, but you really bring all that stuff around with you? Yeah. Does it like, cause it doesn't really break down, right? Like what is that, what is your, what is your setup you look like? You wanna see? Yeah. yeah, 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 This is, this is like clothes and, and, and stuff, or this is just like for all the gear? This is just gear. And then I'll like roll up t-shirts and put it in this, which I check in. So. I get the I get the feeling that when you travel, you're mostly I think your head might be cut off. You're mostly bringing gear, right? Like not necessarily clothes to wear. Pretty much, and it sucks. And so everything that you just saw is in there. Yep, drone, all the camera gear. So going through airports must suck. Yes. Traveling can suck. It's mostly waiting in those long security lines at the airport that sucks. There's a company called Clear with locations at many of the popular airports and they promise to be the fastest way to get through security. I'm partnering with Clear on today's video to put that promise to the test. So here's how Clear works. You can either sign up online, and I literally did this in the car, or at one of the kiosks at the airports. And then you go through the enrollment process with one of Clear's ambassadors. And this guy was super nice. You don't need an appointment or anything like that, you just go. It literally took five minutes to complete the process. Clear grabs your fingerprints on both hands and then does an iris scan, and that's it. Once you're set, going through Clear is absolutely faster than waiting on the regular security line because they literally walk you to the front of that line 
And yes, you definitely feel like a boss. Clear is the best way to get through airport security. You should definitely try out Clear if you're a frequent traveler. The first 200 people to sign up using Sam Sheffer as their promo code get a three-month trial for free. Seriously, take advantage of this because A, it's free, and B, it actually works. Go to clearme.com and enroll using promo code Sam Sheffer to get a three-month free trial. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions about any of the gear that we mentioned, I'll be hanging out in the comments. Check out Eric's channel, check out Eric's video, and I'll catch you in the next one.